Happy February. Happy Black History Month to everyone. On this Thank you, Vice Chair Crawford. Happy Black History Month. Thank you. We're going to have a little video first before we start our meeting. Here we go. Thank you so much for that uh, to start us off on our meeting. Um, we can do roll call, clerk. Can you all hear me well? Yes. Please note that the board has one vacancy. Ms. Wilson? Member Tolly? I'm here. Member Scott? Member Scott. I think she's on mute. I do see her on. Yeah. Member Look. Roberts. Here. Member Maraz. Member Moore. Member Luckman. Member Lanto is excused. Member Joyner is excused. Member Hines. 
Present. <laughs> Member Gator. Present. Member English Barnhill. Member Dog. Member Collins. Present. Member Cash. Here. Member Baris. Here. Vice Chair Douglas. Present. Please note that Chair Crawford is excused at the moment and may join the meeting later. The board does not have a quorum. Okay. So since we don't have a quorum and we were supposed, there's little, uh, first let me apologize for the um, late notice. We had a committee of the whole that is running over and we used the same Zoom link. So because of that, we had to pivot to a new Zoom link. Um, so um, that's why we're running a little late today. Um, and so we're gonna have people joining us and they probably will join us later maybe. Um, but we're going to move on with the agenda. We can't do any approvals. We can't do anything because we don't have a quorum at this time. Um, so I don't know if our guest speakers are on. Amina, do you see our guest speakers on yet? It should be. There Anthony. is. Say that again. There's a Anthony Brogdon. On, I'm not sure yes. if that's a speaker under a different name. No, that's a guest, I believe. So we're just going to move on to, let's see, where are we going to move on? <laughs> so we don't have an update for our committee because Dob is in a meeting. Um, do we have any committee reports? We'll start there. Okay. Madam Vice Chair? Yes, go right ahead. Thank you. I do have an update. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, the record, Latanya Gator giving a committee update for starting with the Health and Wellness Committee. Um, and so we had our first meeting um, this past Tuesday. Um, and I know I should probably give some context. So there's been a subcommittee subcommittee that's been working on maternal health, um, but as an umbrella, we are the Health and Wellness Committee. So we met as a full committee this past Tuesday at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, we discussed some ideas that we would like to bring forth to the commission, one being that we would like to host something in the month of May because it is Mental Health Awareness Month, but it is also Maternal Mental Health Awareness Month. So we would like to host a panelist uh, type of event uh, to the full public. And so we look forward to sharing more details about that once we secure a list of panelists, once we secure a venue and other uh, event details. Um, we also talked about who we would like for, what we're hoping can present today. Um, and that will be Dr. Andrea Sheed from Team Wellness. So again, fingers crossed, hopefully she's gonna present today. And then I know the a maternal health team, which includes Lee Maroth and Commissioner Dobb. They've been working on a period poverty um, initiative along with some other students and some interns that work alongside uh, Commissioner Dobb. And one of those students, her name um, was Rita Saleem. She presented to us in our meeting regarding legislation that she would like to work on, that she's been working with Representative Breen on uh, regarding um, having those who are in business to sell period products like tampons and pads, that they make it known of any harsh chemicals uh, that we may be putting into our bodies as women and other legislation around like periods and menstrual cycles, just looking at women's health. Uh, so we really appreciated her presenting that information to us. She's a very like a powerhouse student. And she even wants to come to us one day to present what she has put together to the full body. So we said that we would forward that to Chair Crawford and see what comes of it. Um, my other update would be regarding the Women's Resource Fair. Uh, so we are rocking and rolling with that project. We are hoping to secure Wayne County Community College of Northwest District campus again. Uh, thanks to Vice Chair Crawford, she did complete the paperwork and we're just waiting for them to render approval. So fingers crossed on that. 
We have a series of meetings coming up. We have Excel sheets. We have templates ready to go to either invite, re-invite those who we invited before, but also invite new companies to host a very wonderful fair for the women of Wayne County. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I'd be happy to hear any ideas or thoughts based on my reports. Does anyone have any questions regarding the report? Yeah. No. All right. Ready? If I'm hearing and seeing none, I just want to remind you all that uh, we would like for everyone on our commission uh, to be a part of the Women's Resource Fair. So our next meeting is on February 20th at 6 p.m. Um, and I will be sure to record that meeting invitation so we can be all hands on deck and making this fair um, very valuable to the women of Wayne County, but also having it be something that's fully represented by us all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that report. Does anyone have any questions for Member Gator? Just for the record, I would just like to make a correction. Uh, Member Gator, thank you for the promotion. However, it's Vice Chair Douglas. <laughs> and you said, <laughs> but Sorry. it's okay. I just want the record to stand corrected so that nobody would question that. But thank you so much. Uh, I see um, Member Hines. Member Hines. Quick question, is there like a, a form that we can get out to the vendors um, that want to participate ahead of time? Because I have quite a few uh, people that would be really good with this uh, fair that would like to participate. But is it like, a, like a, is it a fee for them to participate, some type of forms they can fill out? My, may I answer that, Vice Chair Crawford? Yes. Vice Chair Douglas, I don't know why I keep saying that. I guess I'm just used to answering the summer in a way. Yeah, right. <laughs> I got you. It's okay. But if I'm allowed to answer that, um, in terms of is there a form, so there's no fee for sure. There's no fee for vendors to participate. Um, I'm waiting to get approval for the invitation letter that I plan to send to vendors or companies that want to participate. As soon as I get the green light um, and as soon as we secure a venue, if it is okay with the leadership, I can make sure we get it to you so you can send it to those who may potentially want to join How's that? Thank you. Sounds great. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Member Gator. Um, we continue with the committee reports. Do we have anything from volunteer? Member Tally? Yeah, I can speak to a few things. I mean, just kind of piggybacking off uh, Member Gator about the volunteers. We met a couple of weeks ago um, um, and we kind of met because we were doing the Girl Scout initiative, and I'm sure we're going to report off on um, Samaritas and the Girl Scout event, um, but we were talking about those events, um, and then we also uh, talked about the resource fair. Um, we'll be getting with Miss Latanya um, in the next week or so, so we can get the event bright together and get it moving so that we can start signing up volunteers. Um, I think the benefit this year looked like we're shortening it up this year, the hours, um, and I think that would be more conducive for people to stay the whole time. We had shifts before last year, so we had to get ship, you know, volunteers to cover each shift. Um, but I know some people I know with the uh, the hours we have allocated, uh, they'll stay the whole shift. So that's kind of kind of a plus for us on the volunteer side. Um, so we're still working on that. Um, um, our, our committee is um, ready. Um, and I want to thank them for coming out for the Girl Scouts and anybody else. And like Latanya said, we need the full support of the Women's Commission as far as volunteering and, and, and really being an uh, asset to this Women's Resource Fair. We need all hands on deck. And that was our message last year when we put this on, all hands on deck. So I'm hoping that with all the new members we have and everybody from the previous term, we need all hands on deck to execute this in excellence. Um, we want it to be bigger than we did last year. So uh, right now, we're just tying up some lo loose ends with Eventbrite. Um, like I said, me and me and Latanya will get together to tighten that up, and we'll talk to the um, committee, the volunteer committee, and we'll move from there. Thank you. Thank you, Member Tally. Do we have any questions for Member Tally? No, hearing none. Um, I did see Member Cash 
Um, it looks like she dropped off. Uh, but we do have, I believe, the site. I, I, oh, there you are. Cynthia. Oh, yes. Yeah, I had, for some reason, um, technical difficulties. So I just um, called in. So okay. I'm, I will be um, setting up a meeting with our committee. Um, everything for me now has slowed down. Uh, I, ha I have come back from Washington, D.C., so as far as for skilled trades, I'm going to try to get with the members that's on my committee um, at the end of this week to set up a meeting um, for the week of um, February the 18th. Um, so I will be in contact with the ladies that's on my committee so we can have a meeting and hopefully we can have some things put in place for March or for the um, fair that's coming up that's dealing with skilled trades. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay. Any questions, comments on skilled trades? Madam Vice Chair. Yes, Madam Clerk. Um, for yes. the record, the board has reached a quorum. Okay. Can we go back to item B, Madam Clerk? Item B, approval of the January 11th, 2024 meeting minutes. Okay. Uh, the chair would like to entertain a motion to um, approve the meeting minutes for January 11th. Is there a motion? Member Member Gator, motion to approve. Member Gator, is I'll there a support second? support Member Dobb. Support. Okay, it's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Okay, Madam Clark. Moving to item D, Wayne County Commission update, Commissioner Melissa Dobb. Member Dobb. Thank you, Madam Chair or Madam Vice Chair. Um, sorry, I was a little late. We had a committee of the whole meeting today. Um, not much to report as far as women specifically, but um, we recently approved a contract um, to use some of our opioid settlement funds to purchase um, Narcan vending machines. So I think I think probably most people are aware of what Narcan is. It's a um, medicine used to um, help people kind of come back from a, an opioid overdose. It's like a first, it's a first aid um, instrument. And so we are going to be working with Wayne State University to locate the best um, places for these vending machines to go throughout the Wayne County. And um, they'll be free for the public to, you know, take um, a Narcan, a box of Narcan to, you know, keep with them in their house, office, or their purse, and um, hopefully save some lives. Um, I cannot remember off the top of my head, and I'm sorry I don't have the paperwork with me about how much um, money we're spending on this and how many vending machines. I want to say 100 vending machines to start. Um, but, um, you know, that should be really good for the citizens of Wayne County. Thank you for that update. Um, Member Dobb, appreciate it. Any questions? Um, Member Gator. Thank you, Vice Chair Douglas. Uh, through the Vice Chair to Commissioner Dobb, where will the vending machine be placed? So, um, believe every municipality will receive at least one vending machine. And then Wayne State is going to do a study on where um, the most uh, overdoses happen throughout the rest of the county and then place the remainder of the vending machines in those areas. Thank you, Commissioner Dobb. Do would I have permission to share this information like on social media or would you rather wait for me to get something more hard print to share? Oh, it's been announced. We did a press conference and um, there's been news articles about it. So um, yeah, you can share uh, you, you know, Google Wayne County Narcan vending machines and there's, there's lots of information about it to share. Sounds good. Thank you so much.
Thank you, Member Dobb. I appreciate it. Um, Through the chair, I just have a quick question mm -hmm. for Member Dobb. Um, Member Dobb, I don't know if you know, is there an expiration on Narcon? Yeah, so I've I've actually been through the training. Um, mm -hmm. they are good for one year. Okay. Um, it, they tell you that you know if you have nothing else on you and you have you have something that it's expired. Um, and someone's overdosing, use it anyways. Okay. It can't hurt. Um, and even if you're like not sure if someone's um, you know, they're unconscious, you suspect it's an overdose but you're not sure use it anyways it mm -hmm. I, like i could spray it up my nose right now and it won't do anything to me it won't harm me in any way so um yeah but it, it technically does expire after one year so okay gotcha get a fresh... and, and then with the vending machine because i'm i'm not real clear of the process is it, it, you you pay to get I'm, I, what's that process with the vending machine how does that work so I've never actually seen one of these like in person. Uh, I don't know if you just press like a button on it and it drops down, but they are. Is it a charge? Free. No, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why we want people. We want people to get these. We want everyone yeah. to have one, at least one. Um, and so they're, you know, able to use them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any more questions for member Dodd? Commissioner member that. Okay. We're going to move on. I see that Chair Crawford has joined us. And also I see that um, Team Wellness has joined us as well. So I'm going to, at this time, turn the meeting over to Chair Crawford. Welcome. Well, good afternoon, everyone. And, and thank you so much. Welcome to Team Wellness. I had a bit of a family emergency, but I'm here. So we're good. All right, so thank you again for joining. Thank you, great job, Vice Chair Douglas. Amazing work. Thank you so much for standing in the gap during this time. Uh, Team Wellness, I see that you are on the call. So uh, yes, Ms. Andrea, is that correct? Yes, I'm, yes, Dr. Andrea Scheid, yes. Uh, okay, I will say the last name one more time for me, please. Scheid. Scheid. Thank you, Dr. Andrea Scheid. All right. Uh, Member Gator, would you like to do introduction? I sure I can. Like Bear with me. Thank you. Okay. And so before we allow the amazing Dr. Andrea Shad to present, I just wanted to update members um, a little bit about her. But I would need to pull it up. And hopefully my technology doesn't fail me. <laughs> Give me one second. Technology, no one sprint today, and I have everything pulled up and ready to go. And then when it's showtime, nothing. <laughs> Bear with me, folks. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Dr. Andrea Scheid is a board certified pediatrician with over 15 years of experience caring for children and their families. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Pediatrics and a clinical assistant professor at Wayne State University School of Medicine and Oakland University William Beaumont School of Medicine. Dr. Scheid comes to Team Wellness after serving as a director of pediatric hospital medicine at William Beaumont University Hospital in Royal Oak and directing the inpatient rotation of pediatric medicine family medicine, and emergency medicine residents, and medical students. Currently, she facilitates a small group of Lane State University medical students in the longitudinal course, population, patient, and physician, and professionalism, which includes exploring social determinants of health and health behavior. So without further ado, we welcome you, Dr. Andrea Scheid, to the Wayne County Women's Commission, and we look forward to your presentation. Thank you so much. I am so grateful to be here and representing Team Wellness Center today. I know that Sherry um, Gaydenago really wanted to be here with us today, but unfortunately she couldn't. So she wanted to send her regards to everybody. Um, so is it okay if I share my screen? Yes, you have sharing capabilities. Okay, wonderful. So I know that we are um, in um, Heart Health Month, and I wanted to talk just a little bit about 
heart health and the ways that we at Team Wellness, as well as I know in our communities, um, pay close attention to that. Can every, whoa, does that look like it's, uh, can you guys see that slide? It's got something it's going over it. Yeah. yeah, it does, doesn't it? Let me see if, the, yeah. I don't know what that happened there. Let's try something different. I apologize. So really with um, looking at our heart health, I wanted to talk a little bit about not only the social determinants of health, um, but what other factors we can look in our lifestyles to help us um, care for ourselves and our community. I have not had that happen before. I'm gonna move forward with these slides and I apologize for their appearance. Um, so really we wanna to listen to women's voices and protect women's hearts in our community. And so Dr. Beth Freitz, who does lifestyle medicine, really talks about, I exercise for my endothelial cells. We know that by um, exercising the 150 minutes every week and doing moderate exercise actually has a significant decrease, 30% decrease in risk of having heart attack and stroke. And so having the availability of exercise um, community spaces is really important. And certainly our physicians here and our therapists help people navigate what that looks like. And even 10 minutes improves our health overall. This is like really bad. Um, as far as food as medicine is concerned, really the big push that's been happening, and I'm sure you know this, is that plant-based whole foods make a big difference. And certainly within the city of Detroit and Wayne County, we have many different wonderful options now, or we're starting to have more options of getting these fresh plant-based foods to families. You know, we talked about food deserts and education, and really our goal is to get um, eight servings or more every day. And even one serving a day, again, makes a difference. The slide that you see here just demonstrates that having processed foods and the increased quantity of processed foods in our diet actually increases our, more, um, our mortality rates. And in addition, what we want to do is help people with stress reduction. There are certain programs like mindfulness-based stress reduction that will make an impact in our community. We know that there's allostatic load from all the different chronic stress that people experience. And there are ways that we actually can treat this and improve health outcomes despite kids having adverse events in their lives and chronic stress. I was hoping, if you don't mind, to kind of join me in doing a mindfulness kind of based activity. This is something I often use in teenagers, especially those with eating disorders, um, to help them before a meal or to calm down stress. This is called box breathing. Has anyone had the opportunity to do box breathing before? Maybe a show of hands. Wonderful. So maybe if we can just take a moment together so I can calm down because my slides look horrible um, with this thing and we can do some box breathing together. And so those who haven't done it, what we basically do is we breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds, breathe out for four seconds, and then hold that for four seconds. And really what we're doing is changing our physiology. We're regulating our heart rate, we're giving our body biofeedback, and can really help in moments of stress. Again, I do this not only with my patients, but I have my learners do it as well, especially when we're dealing with um, challenging situations and hearing about other, I guess, participating and witnessing other people's traumas. So um, to begin, let's breathe in four seconds. Hold four seconds. Breathe out four seconds. Hold four seconds. Breathe in, hold, breathe out, hold. Okay, take a pause there. I'm gonna do that three more times. 
And um, when we're done with it, I'm just gonna ask you to share what you noticed. There's nothing right or wrong. Um, if you don't mind, just a few of you. So we'll do three more. Ready? Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. One more. Breathe in. Hold. Breathe. Hold. Breathe out. Hold. Thank you guys for participating with me on that. Um, does anyone want to share what they noticed? I'll share. Um, I just kind of noticed like me being at work, like my shoulders kind of started to relax a little bit and just kind of not as anxious as I was before. So thank you. Anybody else want to share? Um, I'll share um, two things. Uh, I became like more aware of my body and also um, same as member Scott said, uh, tension started to release, especially in my shoulders. And I think it's because, you know, I'm just getting more oxygen where sometimes I find myself working and I'm like, am I even breathing? <laughs> you know, so that was very helpful. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. Latanya, did, did you want to share? Yeah. So I was able to increase my focus, my ability to focus and concentrate in the moment. Um, it's a very mindfulness-based practice, and so I really need it when you have a lot of multitasking to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, thank you guys for sharing your experience. I, I certainly noticed I was trying to keep my finger on the screen, and so I felt like because I had, uh, I noticed that I was distracted, um, but it was nice to come back to my breath um, during that practice at the very end. So again, thank you for doing that. I know at Teen Wellness Center, we have um, not only community mental health, and, but in addition to that, therapists for people that are even outside of Medicaid. And we wanna make sure that we're caring for the whole mind, body, um, and spirit, if you will. And so certainly, um, you know, talking about how we can do things with our lifestyle, talking about the food available to our community, having, you know, different interactions with Salvation Army is very important to get that food to people. Um, in addition, I mean, I don't need to say this to you, but sleep is something that we should be uh, looking at in our lives. I know getting that seven hours for me at times can be super difficult, but really that's a sweet hot spot. 78 hours um, decreases our risk of heart disease and making sure that if there's any sleep disorder breathing, especially in children or adults, getting that treated right away to stop any you know, ongoing effects on the lungs like pulmonary hypertension. And one of the most important things I think we can talk about is our environmental exposures. Certainly the things that we put in our own bodies, like as you guys know, um, different drugs, alcohol, and limiting that as much as possible. And for people in our community treating substance use disorders, I know you mentioned, I think you guys were talking about Naloc um, Narcan, I think when I was just coming right on, um, having that available to our community and having those substance use supports, looking at the whole person. I am gonna try to share one more thing as far as our social determinants of health. I'm gonna hope that this goes better. Let's see if I can get That's better. That looks better. Okay, perfect. Yeah. I mean, we can see like your actual point. Um, yeah. Okay. We'll keep it like this, then it won't be. You need to make it bigger. Like, in, yeah. Does that help a little bit? Yeah. A little more. 
They made me update my Zoom right before I logged in. I wonder if that was perfect. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay, so another thing that we are part of at Team Wellness Center and is a huge part and actually named a social determinant of health is civic engagement. Um, what we know is that civic engagement promotes health. It looks at our racial and social inequities um, that persist and we need solutions. And we need our healthcare providers as well as our community members to vote for their health. So we know that there's indirect voting um, impacts in our life, um, specifically treating the un upstream causes of what's going on. And that we know that we have patients that are marginalized by our current health system that are also not the ones that we see um, involved with voting and making decisions about their lives. Um, certainly the social determinants of health and the community um, outcomes have a really complex relationship. And really what we've been, what well, voters have been doing, which um, Team Wellness Center is a part of this year, is looking at that connection. Specifically in Detroit, um, there was an example from Southwest Detroit. We know there's over 24 industrial sites. Um, residents live seven years less than the US population and we see more asthma hospitalizations as well. Um, what we also know about this area is that um, it's one of the lowest turnout precincts in Michigan and many of them are in Detroit, specifically Southwest Detroit. We also see, for example, Chaldean Town. Um, the neighborhood kept deteriorating, schools were getting more dangerous. And in 2013, when this was happening, it had a 14% lower voter turnout rate compared to citywide turnout and the, and the mayoral election. So you can see in this graph here that the percentage of citizens voting age population turnout rate was 3.8%. And uh, directly across the road, we were looking at closer to 60%. We also know in this space that life expectancy was six years lower than the state average. We also see that relationship nationally when we look at this index, which demonstrates that better health is um, related to more voting access. And so um, voting among adolescents was associated with a less risky health-related behaviors and fewer depressive symptoms is one example. That's my pediatric life right there. And um, better self-reported health. Um, and so really what we do with, um, at our location is people returning from prison are helped with um, not only getting their identification, but um, registering to vote. We have the um, Secretary of State vans that come and help people continue to register. And we're pushing out this movement so that all of our staff gets a badge so people can check to see where they're registered, where they can vote. And it's not, it's not partisan whatsoever. It's really just about engaging people within their community and looking at those kind of lifestyle changes and environmental changes we can do to make life better and healthier for ourselves and our patients. Um, I wanted to open it up to see if you guys had any questions. Do you all come out to um, communities as well? Because um, me and Inkster, so I'm on Inkster City Council and we're kind of doing this voting hall um, and a lot of things that you mentioned are um, issues that like we're kind of trying to address now. So do you all do like maybe closer toward the November election? Like, um, would you guys be willing to come to our different communities to do something similar? Absolutely. And we have our um, like um, that really big bus that we can bring to. Um, if anyone okay. needs a screening, we can do that together. Perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll be in touch for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think Ms. Hines, is that? 
Yes. Um, so I sit on the um, Wayne County Healthcare Disparity Council with Debo, Detroit Black Organization for Horse Sheffield. And they got this grant where they're doing free health screenings. It's called Blueprint to Wellness. And we come out to the different communities and it's totally free. And the grant only lasts, I think it's like the spring. So is there a way to get your contact information? Maybe we can all link up because it's healthcare and it's free. And they do stuff with the COVID screening too for free. The CT. Oh, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. I can... Um write my contact information in the chat and share information okay. as well with um, my leader. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Shai, if I can, I would like to uh, call on members. And, um, I recognize uh, Commissioner Dobb. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Andrea, for um, this presentation. I, um, I'm a uh, active with the National Association of Counties, and I sit on the Committee on Environmental Energy and Land Use. And last year, I introduced a policy resolution regarding the, um, like the uh, correlation, or not correlation, um, intersection of um, environmental issues, the climate crisis, and um, women's uh, reproductive health, reproductive issues. And I liked your slide on there um, about, you know, our in Wayne County, we have really high pollution rates in certain areas. And, you know, even within the state of Michigan, we have like the highest, um, some of the highest polluted areas. Um, and so it was really interesting to look at also the low voter turnout rates um, you know, and so how they all it um, intersects with women and women's health and women's issues. If women are being affected by the pollution, environmental issues with their reproductive health um, and not voting and how not voting affects their reproductive um you know, men making laws that affect our bodies, and it's all connected. Um, so that's that's a lot to think about, and um, maybe some some work that we can do on those issues. So really appreciate that. Thank you. All right, thank you so much for that comment, uh, Member Gator. Sure, thank you, Dr. Shai, for your presentation. It was definitely very informative. I heard you say that Team Wellness has a mobile van, and I just wanted to say we are well aware of it because you guys were gracious, gracious enough to participate in our last resource fair in April of 2023. So we're hoping to get Team Wellness back to that fair with a table and a van. That was me promoing, guys. <laughs> <laughs> My two birds with one stone. <laughs> I love it, member Gator. That's... <laughs> Um, thank you so much. And I would say, Dr. Shai, this is this was wonderful and great information that you shared with us. Um, you know, I will share and how important it is for women to get their health checked. Um, I've shared, I, I don't know if I ever shared this on this platform, but a lot of my friend, family and friends know that I'm a three-time mini stroke survivor. And so for women, it is very important. Um, but I find out, found out that mine was a vitamin deficiency. Uh, and so we didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, I'm eating right, I'm doing this right. But um, it's so important that we look at everything all the way around, um, you know, when it comes to our health and vitamins and minerals. And thank you so much for sharing your wonderful resources today with us thank you for your wonderful i know don't worry about the slides but you still did a great thing a great great um presentation so thank you so much is there any uh quick tips that you have like maybe three quick tips for women that you know sure i i think really for women in general is i think looking at our stress and being able to identify that within ourselves and not believe like and, and advocate for ourselves. I think oftentimes we're told not to believe our bodies and there's story after story where even when we do and we tell people they don't listen. And so I think being an advocate for our health and trusting our bodies and ourselves is very important within the healthcare system. I think that um, making sure that we set time for self-care for ourselves 
meaning um, we have so many responsibilities, but taking that time to just be outside or to take that breath. And then finally, like you said, making sure that, you know, we're, we're checking in on our health, doing our visits the way we're supposed to. I hope that was helpful. It was. Thank you so much again for your time and presentation today. Can we all give her clap or, you know, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Okay. And if you have any additional um, links that you would like for us to revisit, if you can please share them in the link. Okay. Thank you so much again, Team Wellness. Uh, at this time, um, I know I'm looking at our, our time. I'm just going to ask our members if it's okay, if you're able to stay on for additional uh, 10 minutes, uh, if possible, if your time permits, uh, leave a notation. And I would like to call on clerk at this time. Moving to item F1 under new business, resolution, housing, member Melissa Daub. Thank you. Commissioner Daub. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this item is not ready for submission yet. So can we um can I make a motion to help me out? Uh, Commission Council or Clerk, do we need to just pass this for the day? Good afternoon to this honorable body. This is Mary Parisian, Assistant Commission Council. Um you can you can pass it for the day. It's it that's fine. Okay. Yeah, I'd just like to make a motion to pass for the day. We just didn't have time to complete the analysis. Member Gator support. Sorry. Second. Member um, Vice Chair. I think Member Gator supported. Sorry, Cynthia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Could you please confirm? Yeah, we're good for a vote. I moved it. A member Gator supported. All right. Thank you. All okay. those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you for your uh, work on this, Commissioner Dodd. Thank you. Okay. Madam Clerk, we're ready to proceed. Item, sorry, we, F item F3, American Heart Association, Wear Red Day. Yes. Okay. Vice Chair Douglas, I would like to call on you at this time. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think we covered that under the wellness presentation, so I think we can move on to the next item. Item G, unfinished business, there is none. Moving to item H, such other matters as may be properly submitted before the commission. Okay. I have not uh, received any, uh, Vice Chair Douglas. Um, we need to go back to item four, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Under unfinished business. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes, there was an oversight, uh, Madam Clerk. We did uh, on the agenda. There was an item for F4. My apologies. Item F4, recognizing Black History Month, Vice Chair Cynthia Douglas. So um, in honor of Black History Month, I know that we just did the um, national Black National Anthem earlier on, and I hope you all enjoyed that rendition. Um, with Al Green and Denise Williams. Um, but we just wanted to bring attention to Black History Month since this is February. Um, but Black History Month was created to focus attention on the contributions of African-Americans to the United States. It honors Black people from all periods of US history, from the enslaved people first bought over from Africa in early 17th century to African-Americans living in the United States today. Um, in Michigan, there are several notable African-American men and women, and some of them on this board, all of us, <laughs> um, that have made significant contributions in the state. Today, as the Wayne County Women's Commission, we would like to focus on the women of Michigan. But before we do that, let's give a shout out to 
Garland Gilcrest, elected 2019 as the 64th Lieutenant Governor of Michigan, the first African-American to serve in the position. Joe Tate became Michigan's first African-American Speaker of the House in 2023, serving his third term in office, re representing the 10th House District. Um, Shirley Chisholm, the first African-American woman nominated for president, once said, you don't make progress by standing on the sidelines, whimpering and complaining. You make progress by implementing ideas. The following women are the strong examples of this quote. Isabella Bomfrey, the woman known as Sojourner Truth was an advocate for civil and women's rights, born into slavery in New York in the, prior, in the year 1797. In 1827, she escaped from her owner taking refuge from a Quaker family who bought her freedom for $20 until the New York State Emancipation Act was approved a year later. Sojourner Truth, at the invitation of her Quaker friends, moved to their village of Harmonia, Michigan, located just outside of Battle Creek in 1857. Although she continued to travel widely, surviving on the selling of her book, The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, she made Battle Creek her home, along with her family. During the Civil War, she worked to ensure the troops of color were treated fairly and organized supplies for the Black troops. Due to poor health, uh, Sojourner Truth uh, returned to Battle Creek for good in 1875. Though treated by a variety of practitioners, including Dr. John Harvey Kellogg, she died on November 26, 1883. She is buried in the Battle Creek Oak Hill Cemetery. Um, Athenia, I'm sorry, Athenia Crockett. Dr. Crockett was a black woman from a poor family, was able to go to college and then to medical school. Dr. Crockett was a Detroit physician who became well-known as a community leader and humanitarian. Dr. Crockett attended medical school at Howard University when she was 28 years old and later married Congressman George W. Crockett Jr. She became Michigan's first black woman specializing in obstetrics and gynecology, I'm sorry, for 35 years. Dr. Crockett practiced medicine as an obstetrician in Detroit. Dr. Crockett was an advocate for the daycare centers and to assist women, working women. She directed the Detroit Maternal Infant Care Project from 1967 to 1970. In 1972, she led the fight to liberalize Michigan's abortion laws. Uh, she was named Physician of the Year and was the first woman to be president of the American Lung Association. Let's talk about Fannie, May Fannie M. Richards. Richards was the first black school teacher in Detroit. She also first bought the kindergarten educational program to Michigan schools after studying in Germany with Frederick Fobel, who helped pioneer the concept. She was one of many black leaders and opposed segregate, segregated public schools. When segregation later became illegal in 1869, Richards taught at a newly integrated school Everett Elementary, where she stayed for 44 years. When she retired in 1915, she helped finance the Phyllis Whitley Home for Aged Colored Ladies and taught Sunday school at the historic Second Baptist Church. In 1990, she was inducted into the Michigan Women's Hall of Fame. You can find Rich's historical marker on Rivard Street where her home once stood. Ruth Ellis, Ruth Ellis, born in 1899, became the became an LGBTQ plus rights activist at a young age and moved to Detroit in 1937. A successful entrepreneur and an openly gay woman, Ellis inspired her community by opening her home as a safe haven for primarily black LGBTQ people in the city. She died at 101, at 101 years old, but her legacy remains through her namesake organization, the Ruth Ellis Carter Center, which was created in 1995 as a trauma-informed center for homelessness and at-risk LGBTQ youth. Last but not least, Kyra Harris Bolden. Justice Kyra Harris Bolden, former Michigan State Representative, joined the Michigan Supreme Court on January 1st, 2023, 
when she was appointed by Governor Whitmer, making her the first Black woman to serve as a justice a, in the state of Michigan. A graduate of Southfield High School Public Schools, Justin Bowman chose to remain in Michigan for her studies, receiving her bachelor's degree from Grand Valley State University and Juris Doctorate from the University of Michigan Mercy School of Law. While serving as a state representative in Michigan House of Representatives, Bowman uh, advocated for Michiganders as a member of the Judiciary Committee and focused her work on criminal justice reform and crafting and passing bipartisan legislation to protect survivors of sexual uh, violence. Lastly, John Lewis said, ours is not the struggle of one day, one week, or one year. Ours is not the struggle of one judicial appointment or presidential term. Ours is the struggle of a lifetime or maybe even many lifetimes, but each one of us in every generation must do our part. And I wanna thank each of you on this Wayne County Women's Commission for doing your part. And thank you very much for your time. That's it for me, Madam Chair. <laughs> well, when I say thank you so much, that was an amazing presentation. Thank you for sharing. Um, yes, we have amazing women out of all of you. And thank you for the hard work that each one of you do. And um, I have to say, Member Gator also, I'm going to say that was uh, in her district, one of the first African-American women to be school board president in District 7. So I wanted to recognize you on that. I was there for that. So thank you for all your hard work during that term. Okay, Madam Clerk, we are ready. Moving to public comments. All lines have been prompted to unmute. Okay. Do we have any public comment at this time? Chair Crawford. Recognize member I'm not, a, I'm not a member of the public, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for that acknowledgement and thank you to all the other women leaders around the great state of Michigan who empower us all to do what we need to do. <laughs> oh, so thank you so much. Okay. Uh, any, pu any more public comments? Okay. Madam Chair, Vice Chair Douglas' hand is raised. Okay, thank you. Recognize Vice Chair Douglas. Um, I know this isn't part of the public comments, but I wanted to speak on our um, partnership with Girl Scouts that we attended. Um, so we attended that event and it was wonderful seeing the young ladies um, of the Girl Scouts uh, participate the way they did. We sat in on some workshops. I know that Commissioner Dobb did one of the workshops and uh, I'm not sure who else did, but if any of you who did any of the workshops can speak on it and your experience with that, that would be great. I mean, <laughs> yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> it, was, it was an amazing event. Um, so I I sat in um I facilitated the I forget what what their rank is called but it was high school uh girls um I think ninth uh, or eleventh and twelfth grade um and we we talked about uh voter turnout and we looked at the statistics for voter turnout in the state of Michigan Ohio and I think Indiana. And talked about from like 1940 to to present. So we looked at presidential and gubernatorial years, and we talked about the highs and the lows, and why people might come out to vote, why might they might not come out to vote. I was just so impressed with these girls and and their responses, their answers. Um, it was it was really a great conversation. I I think we could have sat there all day and talked with them. Um, so. Uh, you know, they all have bright futures and it's a really, you know, the Girl Scouts 
program is a really great program. So um, and also we had Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson come as the keynote speaker and she she was awesome as well. Really great event. Thank you, Member Dobb. Anybody else? I know that Melanie was there, Lindsay was there, Chair Crawford. Uh, for me, it was just an amazing experience as well. Got an opportunity to talk to some of the young ladies and it's just amazing to hear them speak. And it's like, what? <laughs> Where was I like this when I was their age? But if anybody else has any comments? Um, yes, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to all of you. Um, you know, whether you were there, or you you know, sent love, well wishes, trust me, we all had an opportunity to participate in our own specific, you know, own individual way. Um, you know, it's been grand. I know that member Scott was over there in the photo booth and had the young ladies looking nice. And, uh, you know, Melanie, we appreciate you. Member Hines, I'm calling you in just a moment, but I had the opportunity with uh, member Tally to sit in the room <laughs> with Commissioner Dobb. And when I tell you, just to, to see the young ladies in the room light up. It just, it warmed my heart to see you and your, your gift. Um, sometimes it's best to just sit back and observe and you were a natural. And I, I hope that you, you know, consider doing it. I know there'll be other times and opportunities to participate uh, in events, but again, thank you to all of you. Member Hines, I recognize you. Yes, I like to say I love this Women's Commission. We have some of the best women in the world. Super excited to be a part of this group. And uh, we had an amazing time at the Samaritan Center. So that was amazing. Uh, just seeing the families, just giving the love. I definitely like to go back there again. And um, I also enjoyed the Girl Scouts of America. That was an amazing event. And I'm so excited that we get the um be like a partner with them. So I just like to say again, I just definitely like being a part of this group. I mean, Ms. Gator, uh, Ms. Lindsay, Ms. To the Tally. Like, I mean, you guys are phenomenal women in your community. So I'm just excited to be a part. All right. Okay. Um, I was going to make oh, one last comment. Um, I had came on a little late, but I wanted to uh, make a comment that with the went. With the resource fair approaching, I will be um, reaching out about the employee committee, employers committee soon, uh, touching bases with uh, member Tally soon in regards to uh, a couple of things uh, for the employers. Uh, and then I also will discuss further information about skilled trades and as well as housing. So there'll be a few more things coming up soon maybe email text, but we're still working. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, oh, Vice Chair Douglas recognized. So one more thing, and I promise that's the last thing. Uh, so we will be um, hosting the in-person meeting on our next meeting, which is March 14th, I believe. And it will be a luncheon. So we will be sending out uh, notifications and instructions on parking and all that other good stuff. But um, we need to have people, the RSVP to let us know so we can order lunch for everybody. And I believe it's gonna be in conjunction with the Michigan Michigan Women's Commission as well. So they will be in yes. attendance. So That is correct. Okay, all right. So just to let you know, give you a heads up, <laughs> it'll be here at the Guardian Building. So we will send out instructions for that in-person meeting. Okay. Okay. And um, yeah. if possible, I would say um, I know we are our meetings are typically an hour, but you, there will be lunches available. Uh, but we typically like to stay around a little bit if you can. So if you can block off two hours in your personal time <laughs> or business time, we'll appreciate you. But if not, we understand if it, if you can only stay an hour. And the Guardian Building does have a. Uh, Zoom capability. If you're unable to meet in per uh, meet in person, however, we would love to see you. We would love to love on each other. So if you can make it, we'll see you then. All right, Madam Clerk. Adjournment. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? 
Move to adjourn. Member top. Supported. All right. So motion made by Commissioner Dobbs supported. Oh, sorry, Member Scott. Sorry. Member Scott. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Member Scott. All in favor. Aye. Aye. All right. Everyone loves you. Happy Valentine's Day in advance. Thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.